Uh, our next guest, the uh, speaker, he doesn't really need an introduction, especially here in San Antonio. We all know who he is. Uh, but this is our Archbishop, uh, Gustavo Zia. So if you uh, would please join me in welcoming him. Uh, Jesus Christ. There are many people involved in 
prison ministry, or prison service, let's call it that way. We have a law enforcement, we have uh, uh, people in health care who are involved too, but you are involved because of love of Jesus, because of your faith, because of your Catholic understanding. And of course, there are other people from other faiths who also they do it because of God. What you do under the patronage of St. Maximilian Colby is a testament to your level of commitment and your willingness to embrace extreme sacrifice in fulfilling your call. In the name of the Church, in the name of Pope Francis, our Pope, I thank you. And I embrace you in his name. Your mission statement says, It is the mission of the Colby Prison Ministry to share the agape love, a special love of Jesus Christ with those in prison and to teach the fullness of the truth of the Catholic Church. And I am pleased to say that there are many examples uh, that you are fulfilling your mission with energy and integrity. Energy and integrity. As you know, even just to go into the facility, you know, it takes time, you never know what to expect in the process, just to get in. All that expectation shows dedication and integrity and generosity. But today, I want to focus on the sense of our call to serve the incarcerated with the gospel of Jesus. It's true that God is using us, using you. But it is to present the gospel of Jesus and nothing else. Otherwise, we will not write there that we can cause And to help, and, and I, I, will, I wish to help us to move beyond our fears or reservations about serving the men and women who are incarcerated. Do you remember that God qualifies those whom He calls to serve? It's God who qualifies us and does not always call the qualified. In the weekday readings this week, we have been following the call of Moses. Remember Moses was a poor public speaker, a migrant was going from place to place, moving constantly, and he had a serious crime in his own background. God did not call him because Moses was perfect. God called him precisely because he could work through Moses' imperfections. We can say the same about St. Paul, St. Peter, they were poor, detached, migrants, people in the moon. And thanks to them, the faith arrived this far as this place. So we also see that the Old Testament prophets is the same story. Again, 
there is a world to qualify for the first pass. He does. And if you and I feel inadequate to this calling, then we are in the right room. I want to lay out the depth of the need for this ministry and then to offer some reflections on the Holy Father of Francis for whom this ministry is so dear to his heart. Some reflections of my own and then to look at ways that we and others can be of support to our incarcerated brothers and sisters. Regarding the need of this ministry, a little research has yielded some astonishing information. In the state of Texas, 40,000 out of every 1 million people are touched by the criminal justice system in some way. Either as a prisoner or on parole, under investigation, with a past criminal record, or as a spouse, parent, or child of the incarcerated. On an any given day in Texas, over 140,000 men and women are in jail or prison. On an any given day, over 600,000 men and women are on parole, deferred adjudication, or under some form or criminal supervision. Those numbers added together would make incarcerated and parolees in Texas alone one of the top 20 cities in the U.S. by population. With this 
really says the same, eventually come forward and it is, that we, the Catholic Church, are present. Many people can serve uh, in God's writing, but the fact that we are people of faith, Catholic faith, we have another way to, 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 to bring about something that is so much needed. The urgency of our need to reach out with Christ's love to these men and women, whom we can honestly say are the least among us, is dramatically key. The opportunity for evangelization is right in front of our eyes. Not
Let me share a few things uh, of his thoughts or what he thought of with you. In 2013, at his first visit to a Roman prison, the Holy Father said the following, At times, a certain hypocrisy pushes us to see prisoners only as people who got messed up, for whom the only path is prison. But we all have the possibility to make mistakes. I think this statement is so important because it is true. If I think about it, the line between what I have done and what I am capable of doing wrong is a very thin line on any given day. At the Special Mass for Prisoners at St. Peter's Square in 2016, the Holy Father said, let me tell you, every time I go into a prison, I ask myself, why them and not me? So everyone has the possibility to make mistakes. Everyone, everyone, everyone. And just the fact that we have that beautiful uh, expression in the Mass as we begin, each one of them, all year round, is to ask for forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. And then later on, in the our Father, forgive us. And then, Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. And even before receiving communion, in the world, Indeed, why them and not me? I may not have committed some of the actions that those in prison had, but certainly I have had desires that could easily lead me in the wrong direction. In direct support of those who bring ministry to the incarcerated, Pope Francis said in 2015, when he visited Philadelphia, life means getting our feet dirty from the dust-filled roads of life in history. All of us need to be cleansed, to be washed. All of us are being sought out by the teacher who wants to help us resume our journey. The Lord goes in search of us. To all of us, he stretches out a helping hand. He's ready. The Lord is ready to connect. He's ready to give. Remember, if we give what we have, and we do good, you can imagine the Lord, that is just goodness, is good, is goodness. We do good, God is goodness. He wants to, to embrace, to bring in, instead of to push away, to send them aside or put them aside. He wants to bring them in. And this is an incarcerated ministry. But if we go to other ministries, the Lord doesn't change. He's the same. He wants us in with Him. And we say, through Him,
last year on Holy Thursday, as the washing of the feet at Regina Cherry Prison in Rome, the Holy Father said, Jesus takes a risk on each of us. Know this, Jesus is called Jesus, not Pontius Pilate. How to take a risk on us. So indeed, Jesus does not wash his hands of us. That's Pontius Pilate. Jesus does not wash his hands of the incarcerated or of other families. When we belong to him, we belong to him. We will not throw. He will not throw us away. In Jesus, there is not throw away culture. You know, we have seen globally how this is more and more. You know, when I I hear which is true about the economies better today, but it is true that there are more people suffering today. There is more division between poor and rich. And not only that, the people that they have uh, infirmities, limitations, they are not in consideration in our societies. If they are poor, if they are limited in different ways, they are different. It's so hard to kill them. And there is more suffering today. There is more in the world. There is more suffering. In Jesus there is no throwaway culture. What we see in the example of the Holy, of the Holy Father is that the incarcerated are close to his heart and represent the lowest from Christ's love. In Christ's love. And from whom he suffered the most. So when we say properly as we started today, by his passion, passion of Christ, because mercy for the whole world is needed for us as we interact with the curse. Now the Holy Father suggests two characteristics of our present with incarcerated. Oh, he does it with two characteristics. One is encounter, and the other one is accompaniment. Encounter and accompaniment. I will get back to that approach in just a moment. But let me first share with you some of my own experiences with this thing that so I had. You know, I feel that when I go there and I, my own experiences, uh, great humility, uh, the sense that truly they are my brothers and sisters, and that uh, I love them, I love them. If I leave those places, it's because I have to go. I really, um, uh, I will not say that I, uh, that I enjoy, because I am aware that those places, or they are in those places because uh, serious matters, uh, crimes have committed, been committed. But I, I, I feel that they are my own. I feel one of them. And that has been helping me with my limitations to minister and just bringing the Lord and just to love them and to serve them. Um, 
I have been very moved by some of, of their actions. Sometimes it is not, I don't know too much about their lives. It's okay. In few cases I do, but most of the cases I don't. And I don't need to, but I can value their actions, their words, their prayers. I will tell you that some of those persons, they have the best choirs of the archdiocese. <laughs> and just go back to your own parish. <laughs> it's not true. Or the fervor in our parishes sometimes is the Lord be with you. Not in prisons. They invest. They invest. They are there. In the middle of all their complications, of their situations. They are there. They clearly express their need. So when I go there, I, I, I see myself also as a person that needs. Needs God, needs others, needs healing, needs virtues, needs... And, and then some of them have shared experiences, I have shared patients, and, and it's just, again, Jesus Christ, the Baptist passion, His mercy, and the right there is the whole world and everyone and everyone. Never to judge. Because judgment leads us to tell them what we want to tell them and not what God wants to tell them. Never. I am very moved by you when I have seen you in that ministry. I am very moved and we need, I need to change. When I interact with you when in those places, I know that I need to change. But I need conversion. But going back to the Holy Father's uh, approaches to the ministry to incarcerate is to encounter and to accompany it. By encounter, the Pope, the Pope does not mean simply bumping into someone in a chance meeting. He does not mean something superficial and lacking serious no. By encounter, the Holy Father means the opening up of oneself and presence to another human being. It's like I was saying about them, how open they are to participate, to be there, they are truly invested and present. We need, we are called to that encounter, really being ourselves for them and with them. In other words, inviting them also to the same openness and possibility of a deeper presence to one another. Encounter can only occur when there is openness and a spirit of trust. And when this has been established, it means having the courage to be vulnerable. That makes tremendous difference. To be vulnerable, not to come from the perspective, I am good, they have failed. I am better, so I can help them. Our hope is that the Lord, who knows them, will help them and enter in the life. 
lives. We are just there to witness. And vulnerability is part of this encounter. This is not easy with every, anyone. And vulnerability to be incarcerated is an especially delicate matter that deserves a certain caution. If we enter vulnerable into that country, we have to recognize that they are very vulnerable, very vulnerable. And we have to be very respectful and very uh, uh, delicate. It's a delicate ministry. You cannot just enter to that ministry like As much as we have 
have several parishes, but one that comes to my mind right now is uh, Christ the King, in which uh, I think we did a program there together on TV uh, of families who had been ministered by people like you to get ready to also the, uh, and to integrate the member of the family who has been in prison for, for time, a long time. That's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I ask you today to think deeply about the role and place of the encounter and accompaniment in your Colby prison ministry. I know you are already doing it, but I ask you um, to consider to use these two terms more often in your ministry. To be very intentional in using the terms. It does good to our brothers and sisters in prison by personally. When they hear the word encounter, when they hear the word accompaniment, oh, that is what you are doing. To have to understand that they are not alone. And they you know that physically they are not alone. There are many people in those places. Sadly, but you give them a sense that they are connected. You know, and accompaniment means that even if they don't see you, they know that you are with them, praying for them, thinking of them, uh, giving, uh, planning your next visit with them, etc. So, encounter and accompaniment. A man named Dale Resinella was quoted in a 2017 article in Catholic Digest about his suggestions for those called to ministry among incarcerated. Dale had spent 19 years doing ministry among those on that road in Florida. Here are the precise suggestions. First, minister behind the fence. For those who feel called to minister directly to prisoners, there are many different types of prisons that need ministry, such as juvenile, psychiatric, psychiatric, military, federal, and state. And there are also local jails where inmates are waiting court proceedings, serving less than sentences, or are waiting transfer to a prison. So he suggests contact your diocese. To see how you can become involved. So minister behind the fence. Second, be a pen pal, a spiritual mentor to an inmate.
confirmations of different places. And I have an anniversary of the parish, 60 years, in Masada Cathedral. And I was finishing the Masada Cathedral, and besides the Lord Jews in the morning, I haven't taken anything, so I started to learn a little bit. And I was waiting just to leave the Mass and to go and eat and to drink a glass of wine. I mean, just, I was picturing it. I was picturing it. And when I left, I, I wasn't, uh, I do this every time, so I get visual. I spend usually about another hour, an hour and a half. There's very people. And I was ready to go. And one man with the backpack came and approached me. And I looked around and, yeah, and I was looking for a deacon to see if he was able to take care of me. <laughs> and you know why he told me? I was really moved to tears. He said to me, Archbishop, I don't know if you remember me. I just wanted to say thanks to you for the thanks of this. So, of course, my meal was reduced. My glass of wine was empty. Sure. It's, 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 it's. But it's true, you know. It's, I, mean, I was feeling very small, but I said, Lord, thank you for all those things. The third, the third uh, suggestion of this, Dale Christinella, he said, minister on the outside. What he means is, start a parish outreach, and you have done it in different ways, to provide spiritual and emotional support to families of murder victims, crime victims, and their families. Families with loved ones in prison are prepared throughout the pews in all the parishes. How to prepare them, you know, all the families. And even parishes, it's a big challenge. We know how difficult that is to integrate someone in our society, in our liturgies, in our, in our communities. Fourth, Pray for prison workers. The people who work in the prison system, the guards, medical staff, mental health staff, are also need of support. When we go to the prisons, many of them, they must be all their uniforms, tough guys. And they said before, and we have seen it. Before the visit for after, I should you see the Constantly. It takes another time, another meaningful time to do that, but it's worth it. It's worth it to pray for, for those who are there. Uh, and his fifth recommendation is to pray for the Lord. The reason we see her is the patron saint of the mission. And she never left the convent, but she prayed. And she offered her suffering challenges, hurts, and her Eucharist for the success of this ministry. All of us can be patrons of Christian ministry, or we cannot go ourselves by modeling some fruits. So that your ministry can extend. If you have those problems, they cannot go. Even they should not go. They should not. So, Mr. Rusinella summarizes his thoughts about ministry to the incarcerated with this thought. What prisoners need is to know that God 
has not thrown them away. That message is best delivered by brothers and sisters who make the time to come inside or to write and to say, I want you to know that your life is valuable. Indeed, God has not thrown them away. All the society too often has. Throughout the Bible, God's heart is always with those who the Bible calls the other wing. Or the little poor ones of God. God throws no one away. Through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, God continues to reach out to the most needy, the most forgotten. So emboldened, not by our own egos, but rather by the grace of the Holy Spirit, we who are worthy of His call and qualified for this call, but now qualified by God, go forth with courage and hope to encounter and accompany those little ones, those in prison and their families, to proclaim the love of God. We cannot reach to the 140,000 incarcerated today in Texas, or all the 600,000 on parole or deferred adjudication today. But trust in God, and in Him, God will place us where He needs us. We will be faithful to our call, and we will serve with hearts of love. St. Therese, a little flower. St. Maximilian, call me. Our Lady of Guadalupe. Thank you for your service.